Who is this guy? Hello, folks. I am Michael Sean Corby. I'm the Global Creative Director for Living Proof, as well as the Chairman for NAHA. And so what we're doing today is we are going to be doing all things NAHA. So we're going to talk about NAHA collections. We're going to talk about some of the do's and don'ts for each of those categories. And then I'm going to take this technique show you what I would do for, for a Naha shoot in this category, but each time making it useful for your clients. The first collection that I would like to jump right into is hair cutting. This is a category you all love, it's amazing, but there are usually a lot of questions and there are a lot of unfortunate disqualifications. And so this is why I want to take this time to talk to you a bit about using Photoshop as opposed to just using maybe some tips and tricks to get that clean line you're looking for so you don't have to take care of it in post. First of all, all hail to this beautiful collection as all that were nominated. This is by Dorothy Sang. You may know her husband, Silas Sang. I like to call them a dynamic duo. I love everything they do. This collection to me is the epitome of beautiful haircutting technique. Why? Because clearly she's got skills when it comes to cutting. Beautiful angles, beautiful shapes, perfectly selected models, right? Showing the variety of the skills. Putting hair in motion, even if it's not in motion, in the imagery it appears that it's moving at all times. And what I'm going to do is something similar to this. Between these two, we've got a strong line and then you've got these little bit of blurred lines as well. And that's where people get in trouble and they do a lot of Photoshop work. Also, using products that keep the hair clean. You can always go a little stronger with product toward the end, but you don't want to start too heavy handed with your products because there's nowhere to go but to the shampoo bowl and to start over. So for me, I'll be using my baby's Living Proof as the creative director. I'm going to show you how to use the Instant Defrizzer to get that flatter kind of Dua Lipa glass hair. You see it on Kardashians, you see it on Dua Lipa to give you that really ribbon-like glass effect, but without using the flat iron, because the flat iron can give us a lot of those dips and dents in the hair, and that's what we end up trying to Photoshop, and then it's a catch-22, um, because we can't get rid of it. So to get this kind of look, what I like to do is I like to take a fine tooth comb, and I'm gonna try and show you as detailed as I can. Oop, my fine tooth comb has a little bend in there, um, as opposed to something that has bigger teeth, because what's going to happen is the bigger the teeth, the more you're going to see the lines in the hair, and that's not so great for photos. But the finer the teeth, you can see those lines start to disappear. And then when you go really, really fine, right, when you're really just kind of brushing, even just with a toothbrush to ultimately really smooth it and make those lines disappear, the finer the finer you go, the more that will happen. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this instant defrizzer, which is great because it's really going to knock out that frizz. And I've been using it since the hair was damp. And then I'm just going to continue to build on that. So now what we're going to do, and I won't do a ton of this because it's never fun to watch these online classes and then have to hear a blow dryer all the time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do higher heat, lower air. I'm going to take the comb first. I'm going to tap, tap, tap right there close to the scalp. It could stay out of your way. And then what I'm going to do, I'll turn this off. And then what I'm going to do is continue tapping above the comb, but then I'm going to come down below the comb and carefully pushing that just a little bit away from the face as I'm doing that. So again, you get the comb in there. You lock that coming away from the hair. We tap, tap, tap because we don't want to burn her head. And then we really control that hair and then move to the teeth of the comb, right? See how I'm doing that? So it really gives it that smoother look. Now here, she's got a little pop toward the scalp. So let me actually turn this on now. And now what I'm able to do is to just do the same. Tap, tap, put that down at the scalp and then really pressing in a downward direction. And you can see the first time you'll do it, you get these little lumps, but then after that, you're really getting that smoother glass-like finish to the hair.
Again, I'm not going to do the whole <laughs> blow dry thing the entire time. So a lot of this I just went ahead and pre-did for you. But you can see it's giving it a nice glass-like finish. Also, you want to use these kind of clips, these flat clips. If you have something where the clips are starting to leave marks, often I'll just use business cards to take care of that. Always before I start though, I take a little more of my instant defrizzer here, comb it out of the face, and if I see a little bit of a dent, the blow dryer is a great way for giving me that smoothness, for giving me that glass hair, but without giving me the flat iron look. And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about there. The flat iron look, it almost looks like she's holding on to a static ball or something. It just, it doesn't feel like it falls naturally. And as you know, anything that's blow dried, it just tends to stay there better than something that got forced there by a flat iron. Oh, great. Now I'm blowing stuff all over the place trying to stay out of your way. Okay. So now that we've got this hair looking nice and shiny, and I need to remember to use my mirror and not the camera, or I get a little backwards here. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is a cutting technique I call blurred lines. To do it, you just want to use the same kind of comb that you're going to be giving that finish with. So again, it's going to be a very fine tooth comb, or if you're looking for a little bit more bounce in the hair, you could use a medium tooth comb. But I'm going to keep this all, well, actually I'm going to go for the medium. Call me crazy today because I do want just a little bit more volume toward the ends of the hair. All along, I have Simon here. He is monitoring for me your questions. I am happy. <laughs> I'm happy. And so when a question comes through, we'll just hear Simon say it. Simon says. Oh, we'll play Simon Says here today. Maybe we'll even let you see Simon at the end here. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first establish where do I want this bob to be. So I'm inspired by both uh, of Dorothy's looks here. And we can go to the next slide here. I'm inspired by both of her looks to give that blurred line. So what I'm going to do, and I know some of you might be like, what the heck? How can you do that? I'm going to, from the very top of the head, really at that apex, that north star of the head, I'm going to take a section, straight vertical, all the way down. I'm then going to pinch these ends, right, holding that out of the way. And then what I'm going to do, I want you to pretend that your scissors, that they're like a little airplane. And the scissors come down, and then they're pushing up, right? So my airplane is coming in for a landing, if you will. And what I want to do is make sure that that landing is smooth for all my passengers. I'm going to pinch, I'm going to land, and then I'm going to cut upward direction. And what's happening here is that's giving me this little undercut. It's giving that solid kind of line, but it's giving it a little undercut at the same time. Now, as you're starting, take little bitty baby sections as you're seeing it up and then cut from under and work along, take your section, pinch the end. And what I like about this is it's simultaneously giving me a little bit of texture and giving me that perfection that a lot of these Naha shoots are looking for. I know, I know it would have been better if I did maybe like dark black hair for you so you could really see the line, but don't worry, you'll see it when it's all finished. And then if I need to just touch up little hairs underneath, I'm telling you folks, it's better than Photoshop. And it gives it that kind of fatness. We're talking about the Dua Lipa Bob and others. Although I just saw her last week, she's certainly got a lot of extensions in there, rocking the long hair. Okay, so angle the scissor in a downward direction. Once you see the line, tap it up and that's giving you that built-in little undercut. Same thing here, comb it down, pinch the end, the plane, right? I call this my plane. The plane is coming down for a very serious landing, but then everything is saved when you can gently tap the section up. I also love this technique for fringes as well because you want that blunt fringe, but you don't want it to look like 
you know, mommy, mommy, I cut my own bangs or little girl bangs. If you want little girl bangs, then, you know, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> but this gives you this way. See, I'm just pinching it and I'm not putting too much tension on the hair. I'm just sort of grabbing it, bringing it down and tapping. See how that's looking? Just kind of nice and neat and clean. Now, I know a lot of you will be like, oh my God, that goes against everything I learned. Oh no. Well, yes, you should learn the rules first, but like with any rule, we learn it and then we break it, don't we? So this is a very similar thing to that. So I'm taking this edge and sometimes I'll wait for the very, very front until I finished the other side. So you can see there, we're getting that clean line. It's giving me that glassy finish. It feels nice and strong. And what do I not need? I don't need Photoshop, right? So now let's continue with the same. And one thing I find that works nice, take more of that instant diffuser. One thing I find that works nice is just have your client stand up so you can give her this kind of um, technique rather than you like, right? We tend to do that bending over and hurting our backs, which I'm even doing a little bit right now, okay? And as you're working, you can follow along, right? Just clean up a little bit underneath. That one I just didn't scoop up quite as much as the previous. I just take another section, hold it down, medium tension, you can always go back and go shorter, so it's just a nice little way to give you that angle. Bringing it down. And playing down and we scooping up. Playing down and we scoop up. Do we have any questions there, Simon says? Not in the audience yet. Okay. <laughs> I did have a question about this last time I taught it, and that was about the tension that I'm using. Yes, I'm holding it in a downward direction, but it's not the strongest death grip, if you will, right? Just a little bit. Okay, so now this one will establish the length I'm going to do. Again, down and up, down and up. And you can see it just gives that nice, strong line. And then I can just go in and gently, gently give it that strong sort of Naha finish that again, people do a lot by using Photoshop. And I'd rather you not do that. You spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of energy, spend a lot of money putting together your Naha collections. So you want to make sure that you're doing everything by the book. And I talked about, as I'm working here, we've changed the rules a little bit, right? So in that master hairstylist, in hairdresser of the year, in our student um, categories, we really want to see that you can work with all hair types. So make sure that you get in there Make sure you look at these rules. Make sure you see that you're doing everything just right by the book. You see how that has that kind of funky chop to it, no matter which way I move it. And now I can hit it with a fan, right? And I'm not seeing those chops. And yet it's just giving it a nice softness at the same time. So this is one of my tips and tricks, my little secrets to getting that blunt line, but not having to do it sort of like, oops, I got one side a little bit shorter there. That's fun. <laughs> not having to do it necessarily, um, you know, section by micro section, but you could even be working on set. It could be a little bit of a wig, right? So let's talk about wigs. Should you be using wigs for your shoot? They're absolutely allowed, but it's the North American Hairstyling Awards, and we would love to see in the category of cutting that you're actually using 
your cutting skills on a real head, right? I know it can be very difficult to cut those wigs. I get it. But it's, uh, it's more difficult generally to cut real hair. So we'd love to see you cutting the real hair in that category.